guys, Derby here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at how to construct house music in the style of Ferric Dawn and Robosonic. These guys have been huge in the house scene in the last few years, specifically their track In Arms, which just absolutely blew up on Defected. But they've also been really prolific both together and individually with releases on labels like Defected, Tool Room, Armada, kind of the big three of house music, as well as loads of other very respectable labels. What you're going to notice here is a really distinct signature sound. Tight drums and really lush harmonies. Also, everything is kind of tied together with a very distinct theme. Really, really well thought out, well produced music. It's actually quite interesting because the music has a kind of dual function, which they've crafted really well. First of all, it's very radio friendly. It's got amazing, well produced vocals and the instrumentals of the tracks are not too over the top. On the other hand, the tracks have like a very heavy, distinct low end and plenty of like energy and impact on the transitions. And that allows these tracks to feel just as at home playing on the radio or in a shopping environment or really hammering it out in a club or festival. As always, you can grab the project files. There's a link in the description, it goes to my Patreon. You can grab the files from this video and all my other videos. It's a great way to consolidate the learning that I'm teaching in the video and have a look around in a bit more detail to get a bit more depth of understanding of what's going on. Anyway, enough of that, let's make some house music. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and this is the project that I've put together in the style of Ferric Dawn and Robosonic. So it's obviously gonna be a nice housey kind of number, pretty funky, pretty light, pretty uplifting, but with plenty of interest, lots of things going on and quite a bit of impact. So I'll play you through and then we can get stuck into the project. So, there we go. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Did I get the sound right? I think it's pretty close. So let's get stuck in and we'll start with the drums. So the kick in this project is quite interesting. So I referenced a bunch of tracks and it pretty much seemed like they were using the same kick, or at least I think it's a Ferric Dawn kick. It's got a pretty, some pretty weird stuff going on the, on the EQ, but it's got a very, very, very specific sound. So I've actually sampled it from a Ferric Dawn track. Okay, just playing a 4-4. I've split it into like a kick and a top kick. Let's have a listen to this kick. So it's very subby, but the interesting thing is on this EQ, you'll see that there's almost two kind of fundamental peaks. It's almost got like two points of impact. This really helps to give the track this kind of rolling feel. You can almost see that in the waveform of the Simpler. It's got an, a first impact here and then another impact here. And that's what we're seeing in the EQ. So I'm not sure how this has come to be, and it's probably likely that it's just in the sample. Maybe it's done on purpose, maybe it's something that he's designed, I'm not sure. But what I've done is basically used a filter to take out the highs and mids on this kick, and then I've also sampled another version of it from a different track, sounds very similar, where on the track it was actually filtered. So in this one, So it's got a little bit of a buzz after it, so I might just clean that up a little bit. I'll do the fade out and then bring it in.
The reason I've done that to separate them is because there's also a very distinct top to this kick. So it's got that kind of strange double fun fundamental sub. And then it's also got this like, almost like a snare sound on the top. You'll notice this in especially Ferric Dawn's tracks. This is pretty much his signature sound. So if you want something similar but without sampling, uh, grab a snare and try layering that onto your kick and like just adjust it in the mix. And I think that should get you in the right kind of vibe. So those kicks together sound like this. Really cool. Having this sub punch after the first impact of the kick helps to give the track a really kind of rolling vibe. It's really cool. Looking at the claps, I've got two claps here layered. I've got one panned a little bit to the left, one panned a little bit to the right. Not too much, just to separate them a little bit, make the clap feel a bit wider. Um, I'm cutting away a bunch of the low mids on both of them. And you'll see in the MIDI, I've got this one set a little bit before the beat. And what I've done is I've I've shifted these all individually, so each time it's slightly different. And in this one, I've got it a little bit different after. It looks very close, but if I zoom in, each one's slightly different. So that just helps to, again, create a bit of separation. Also gives this kind of live feel. The sound choice in these is not your standard drum machine sounds. That one's almost verging on a snare kind of sound. This one's kind of like a hand clap type thing. It helps to give this like really organic, soulful kind of vibe to the claps. So if I play the kicks and the claps together, you'll hear this is really getting close to their sound. Another thing to note on the claps is that they're very short. Now this one's a bit longer. I could probably bring it in. Yeah, it sounds tighter. And then I've got some saturation just to kind of pump it up a bit. And I've got this reverb, which has got a 30 second pre-delay, 30 millisecond pre-delay. So that means that the reverb starts a little bit after the clap plays, and that helps to kind of make it feel a bit bigger, but without swamping it in reverb. It's a really cool trick. If you time it to the tempo of your track, you can get it to really swing. I've also got this standard clip. And what this is doing is basically chopping off the top of the transient of these claps. You'll hear it's quite inaudible. So what I'm doing is basically shaving off a few dB so that I can have the clap a bit louder but without triggering the limiter on the master channel. Next up, we've got a snare for groove. Well, this is actually a clap sample. But it kind of sounds like a snare or just some kind of white noise type thing. Pretty plain sound, but it's just helping to give a bit of movement in the drums. As you'll notice, the drums are actually pretty simple, but very distinct. So overdrive, just helping to pump it up a bit, and then cutting out some of the lows. Let's go on to the hats. I've got a closed hat which has got a real sound like it's sampled from a real drum kit or something like that. I think to get these kind of like organic, soulful sounding drums, it can be quite helpful to sample stuff from some old soul tracks or something like that, just to layer in your drum kit. Then I've got an open hat. It's quite a bright one, it really cuts through. And you can hear that that already is like the foundation of the sound that we're going for. I've added in a shaker for interest. And this is actually from a pack by Production Music Live called Shakers. And it's, it's really nice because I believe they're all recorded, or at least they sound that way. So they give a really live feeling to the track. Now I've got this shaker texture, which is also from the same pack. This is just a bit weird. It's a piece of a longer sample, and it just kind of sits in the background. Very subtle. And you'll notice here that I've looped it over three bars. So throughout the course of the track, that's actually kind of changing position as to where it plays. Something that we could do to fit it into the groove a bit more 
is to grab that control U to quantize the transients that Ableton has recognized, and then we can just apply the same swing. Doesn't really do much in this case, but whenever I'm using like a texture or a vinyl crackle or something like that, I'll do that generally just to help it fit into the groove a little bit nicer. In terms of processing on that, I've just got a little bit of LFO tool to help it kind of pump with the track. We've got no percussion. In some of their tracks, there might be a bit more percussion or a bit more detail in the drums, but I wanted to show you that really it's the fundamentals of the drums are very simple, just very specific sounding. So let's take a look at the bass. I noticed in pretty much all of the tracks, there was this kind of very dominant sub bass. Some tracks had like a mid bass melody or some plucks on top, but it was always underpinned by this very strong sub. So what I've done is made a sub in wavetable here. So I've used the sub and I've added another sine wave on top. The sub has got a bit of tone added, so that's just adding some harmonics to the sine wave. Then I'm using a 24 dB filter without the filter. Uh, actually, I'll take off this saturator as it's adding some tonality. Okay, so then we add the filter back on. So it's kind of sounding a little bit like a cross between a sub, like a Reese style bass and a bass guitar. So a very simple one, but very distinct. I noticed that when I was trying to get the sound design right, I kind of wanted to add another layer down or pitch it all down an octave. When I pitched it down an octave, it sounded too low, the kind of actual tonality of it. But then when I didn't pitch it down, it was kind of missing something in the low end. So I've added another sub group underneath. So this is playing the same MIDI notes We're in B minor. And I got this key based on the vocal that I found. So we're just playing like a really short progression over a few bars. So it basically goes B, F sharp, G, B, E, F sharp, and then repeats. And these notes are just jumping up, up between the octaves to give it a bit more interest. So the sub is even more simple than the, than the bass. If you're not listening on studio monitors or on decent headphones, you'll probably miss it. It's very low. So let's take a look at this. And I've just rolled off everything below kind of 25 hertz as it's only going to cause trouble for the track, really. But this is really sitting below the main bass and also below the kick. Another point of note is the LFO. So this is much more extreme than I would normally do in my tracks or in most tracks, in fact. It gives it a real pumping feeling, but it's also making space for that kick, which is such a prominent aspect of the track. So let's listen to the bass together. So you can really hear that pumping, right? And then with the kick as well, So it's got a really strong bass, but a really strong kick as well, but there's plenty of space for the kick. It's well done. And I'm just use, I've just grouped these together so that I can use this auto filter to take out the subs. So let's move on to the melodic elements. So first thing I'll do is show you the piano. Very simple. And we're just following the same progression as the bass. It's a little bit more simplified because we don't have the extra notes here. really helping to give it this kind of smooth, housey vibe, right? So these MIDI notes are being influenced by a couple of MIDI devices from Ableton. In my MIDI rack here, I'm pitching it down an octave, and then I'm adding on plus three, plus seven, and minus 12 to make it into a chord. In the MIDI notes, that would look like this. So each one of those is, being, is playing the same thing, like that, but, You'll notice that on this one, it's playing this note here, which is not in the scale. I've also got this scale device. So it's a C minus preset and I've changed it to B. That is basically pushing this note, which is not in the scale up to here. So this is now playing a major triad chord. So let's just get rid of these extra notes. I find this MIDI tools rack 
super handy just to have on deck whenever I need it. This is actually the return of my house piano rack. So it's included in the project if you want to download it. Link in the description to my Patreon to grab that. And this is multi-sampled across a number of octaves from the most iconic house piano. And I'm using this high cut here to take away the highs, as I noticed this was kind of how they did it. The, the piano chords weren't super prominent in the tracks. They were more of like a kind of melodic undertone. So I'm gonna play that together with the kick, bass and drums. So you can hear that already with just those elements, it's already got this very distinct signature sound. It's got this real energy from the bass and then this lush melodic character from the piano. So everything's working really well together. Next element is this offbeat pluck. So here's the MIDI for that, just playing across the root note with a little fill at the end where we've gone up to the D. So that sounds like this. Pretty boring, but together with the other elements. So the fact that it's actually playing on those like straight off beats and then missing the last one, it helps to give it this real groove with the other elements. It's quite interesting. By itself, it sounds pretty robotic, but with everything else, it kind of starts to sound really funky. The role of this pluck is to mimic like a live bass or a rhythm guitar. It's actually quite a funky element despite sounding so robotic. The sound itself is a bit meh. I've basically, a lot of the, a lot of the character is being done with this chorus and this overdrive. So if I take those off, Just a very basic pluck, chorus. A lot of the characters being added by the overdrive. You could use a guitar amp or something like that to give it a bit of a different vibe, whatever you like. In terms of the synthesis, it's got a pretty tight filter with this envelope to modulating the filter frequency, helping to add that plucky nature to it. Oscillator one is a triangle wave and then oscillator two is somewhere between a triangle and a sawtooth, just to give it a little bit more harmonic character but very simple. Oscillator 2 is also up 7 semitones, so it's playing a power chord. Oscillator 1, Oscillator 2. Just a little bit of a difference in the tonality, but pretty similar. So yeah, really simple element, but actually adding quite a lot to the groove of the track. Now we've got this bass shot. Sorry, brass shot. So for this I used a sample. In the tracks that I was referencing, it always sounded like a real brass instrument. So I thought it was important to get that characteristic right. The way that I found this is on Loop Cloud. If anyone out there is not using Loop Cloud, you need to. So I'll show you quickly how I use Loop Cloud to find stuff like this. And then we'll go to Loop Cloud. I'll go here, Instruments, and Wind and Brass, Brass. Now this is going to search all of Loop Cloud. I want it to just be the store and I want it to be just one shots. If I hit library, that's going to be the sample packs that I've added myself or the samples that I've already purchased. Within the Loop Cloud app, I can filter it somewhat. So let's just hit C as there's going to be more options in C than B. And we probably want it to be a bit more of a low mid type thing, right? Then we can audition some sounds here. <laughs> So that one's quite cool. So what I do is I would mute that and go for the next one. That one's also interesting. So what I can do is actually audition this along with my track. I've hit key lock to put it into B and it's gonna be in time with my track. So let's have a listen. Very cool, very handy for finding samples. I just wanted to take the time to show you that because Loop Cloud is absolutely amazing. So you could find your own sample or you could synthesize something like some kind of synth shot or whatever, whatever you feel is right. Then we've got our classic house string. Very standard stuff. 
it's just looping around here and I'm cutting out all of the mids. I've got a chorus on it and some light LFO tool, just pumping it a little bit. Adding some reverb on my reverb send, this one here, synth reverb. And this is from my standard template. Link up here to that video, check it out. You can download it from Patreon. So without the chorus, the string's a bit more vanilla and boring. It just kind of helps to sit it in the background more atmospheric like than it being like so obviously there dead in the center. So let's jump into the vocals because vocals are really important in these tracks. This I just found from a pack on Loop Cloud. Yeah, you got me, you, you really want me. It's not the best vocal, not the worst, but it works for the track. It's in a close enough style. Cool, cool. It's well sung and it's well produced. I'm just adding on my vocal processing rack, which does everything in parallel. All of these reverbs, delays, etc., are being ducked by the dry vocal so that it can get like this really big vocal sound, but without swamping it in reverb, for example. There's a link to a video up here where I explain all of how that's done. And then I'm using my trusty Tal Chorus LX to just give it a bit more vibe. Yeah, you got me, you, you really want me. Damn, I got you, baby, you want me. And while it is very well produced and well recorded and well processed, I've added a little bit more compression just to really kind of squash it together. That tends to be the style in modern house music. Yeah, you got me, you, you really want me. Damn, I got you, baby, you want me too. So it just really helps to even out the vocal and kind of bring up the sustain of some of those longer notes. Here I've got a little vocal reverse. What I've done is taken this part of the vocal, I've chopped it, reversed it, put a massive reverb on it, frozen it, flattened it, reversed it, and then I have it coming into the vocal like this. It's a really cool effect. Here's a link to a video up here where I explain how to make your own effects. Yeah, you got me, you, you really want me. And then in the context with the track, So it kind of plays two roles. It firstly introduces the vocal before it happens so the vocal doesn't kind of come out of nowhere, but it also works as like an effects type sound where it creates some anticipation for that vocal. I noticed in a lot of these tracks, they had some kind of like hip hop samples. This I've also found from Loop Cloud and I wanted something that sounded like a kind of classic 90s New York hip hop style. I actually know Robosonic and he's a huge fan of 90s New York hip hop and has worked on tracks with a lot of amazing artists like Lost Boys, Ra Digger from Flip Mode Squad and a bunch more. Anyway, let's have a listen to this one in the context. So you can hear that this is quite dull, it's quite low in the mix, and that is done on purpose. It's supposed to sound like a kind of sample that's chucked in there. The, all this processing is to aid that. If I take that off. Drop top down, I'm a 69. Right, now with it. Drop top down, I'm a 69. So it sounds like it might be sampled off vinyl or something like that. I've used this to get a bit of a telephone effect with the EQ here. Then I'm adding on a series of kind of distortion and things. So first of all, I've got this, which is like really driving it. I've got the soft clip turned on. So it's like clipping inside of the software in a good way. Drop top down, I'm a 69. Drop top down, I'm a 69. Then I've got this Redux, which is bringing it down to six bit but not all the way, because otherwise it would be really, really crunchy. Drop top down, I'm a 69. Drop top down, I'm a 69. See, the six bit is a bit over the top. So the thinking behind all of this processing is that I've sampled it from vinyl into my MPC 2000 or something like that, you know? Old school business. Then I've got this vinyl. Drop top down, I'm a 69. Drop top down, I'm a 69. Just adding a bit more crunch. 
and then the chorus is just spreading it out a little bit and helps it to sound a bit more interesting basically. I'm sending it to a little bit of ping pong and a little bit of reverb and of course sidechain. <laughs> Really cool, adds another distinct flavor to the track and really switches things up and adds like a bit of contrast against the more poppy, cheesy vocal. Although I wouldn't say that their tracks are cheesy, they're working with like really good vocalists. So I would say that they're classy but accessible. So everything up to this point is relatively simple and quite understated. Actually, I noticed that there's quite a bit going on in the effects compared to some other genres that we've covered on the channel. But again, done in a subtle and understated way. So we've got a crash here. Classic house business, right? We've also got a reverse crash. Normally I would cut out the subs from this, but this has obviously been produced really well. Oh, that's from my sample pack. Link up here, Underground Shades of House on House of Loop. Also, to kind of add to this like hip hop flavor, something that I noticed in a few of these tracks is a vinyl scratch. So on that, I've given it a bit of overdrive, added a bit of LFO tool, so that it kind of grooves with the rest of the elements and use some auto pan so it's a bit more interesting across the panorama basically. The scratch sound comes from a longer sample. Realistically it could be better, it's not like the coolest scratch sound I've ever heard and if this was a track that I was going to release I'd probably take a bit, a bit of time to find something that was really cool. But again I found this on Loop Cloud, there's loads of material on there. Let's check it. <laughs> So really cool in the context of the track, it gives it like another distinct flavor and kind of marries in a few of these themes like the hip hop vocals, right? Now here I've got a reverb snare. And this is sitting underneath this crash, just giving a bit more emphasis to this kind of main drop. So I don't have that under every crash, it's just under this one as it wants a bit more impact because it's like the main drop, right? Now I've got a couple of risers. I've got this pitch riser, but it's pretty quiet. And that is paired with a noise sweep and a snare rise. It all together sounds like this. The other last effect sound is just this like noise impact which happens at the start of the break. Just helps to transition into that break and brings the energy down. So as I said, a few more kind of details in the effects than some of the things that we've covered in the ch on the channel before. If you want to take a look at the snare riser, it's just being automated volume on EQ here, just to increase it in volume and then I'm sending it to a reverb as it comes up. And I've got this echo with a bit of reverb on it as well and this overdrive to kind of pump up the sound a bit and that just kind of thickens it up, gives it, the echo is set to a ping pong so it gives it a bit of space in the panorama, kind of just makes the sound a bit more thicker and a bit interesting. I also like the little spillover, it helps to kind of tie this whole drop transition together. In terms of the arrangement I've basically tried to kind of mimic what one of their tracks would do. Normally they start with the kick out and the drums and bring in the kick and the bass, or maybe there would be a section with just the kick, but often it's the kick and the bass. Then bring in like the melodic theme. In this case, I've also brought in the vocal as I'm not making like a full arrangement, right? Yeah, you got me. You, you really want me. Then we have a little mini break and we go into this section where the vocal comes out and the pluck comes in. So it's just kind of replacing one thing with the other to keep it interesting, keep it moving. So the break 
kind of mimics how one of their tracks would work. A lot of the energy in the lows comes out and then there's kind of a section where the vocals play before a build up in energy to the drop. In a real arrangement from Ferric Dawn and Robosomic, it would probably just be a bit longer, a bit more extended. So that creates a bit more tension and a bit more anticipation in the extended build up. The drops tend to go just back into the groove, back into the main part of the track. Not too many kind of, not too many kind of crazy whiz bang things going. As I said, everything's quite understated and subtle, but very well tied together. So I hope you can see from this that a lot of getting the sound is about the sound selection in the first place and not overdoing it, just getting the right sounds that work well together, that complement each other to create a whole that's bigger than the sum of its parts. And of course, generally very vocal heavy. The vocal is generally the star of the show. If you want to grab this project, have a look around, see a bit more detail about how I've done things and put it together, then there's a link in the description of this video. It goes to my Patreon where you can download the project along with the project from all my other videos. All right, guys, there you go. I hope you really enjoyed that. I had fun making this one. And it was really interesting for me to see how these guys can kind of use just a few key ingredients to create something that's really bigger than the sum of its parts and do that in a way that has such a distinct sound and characteristic to it. Definitely mad respect. If you're into the house music sound, then check out this video I did on Dario Diatis. He's also another prolific producer with a real signature sound. Anyway, that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Thank you.